Thank you to Mental Health Europe for inviting me to address this capacity building event today. Unfortunately, I could not attend due to the fact that I'm currently in Malta. At the start of my mandate, I was asked by Mental Health Europe to be the chair of the Coalition for Mental Health and Wellbeing in the European Parliament, which I accepted with no hesitation whatsoever or second thoughts about it. The Coalition for Mental Health in the Parliament helps us work together to make sure that the voice of people living with mental health issues is loud and heard across Europe. That is why I invite you all to contact your own MEPs and ask them to help us grow even further to tackle the stigma that still exists and make sure that mental health issues are actually a priority. But today it is not about a formal address from the chair of the coalition, but more of a frank address by someone who believes in prioritizing the mental health well-being of each and every one of us. Mental health issues are not something limited to one particular group of people. It can happen to anyone, everywhere, irrelevant of your education level, of your financial status, beliefs, color or creed. People facing mental health issues can be our friends, our family, our colleagues and even our children. And why am I emphasizing this? Simply because I believe that one of the most pressing issues that is stopping legislators from actually creating holistic mental health policies is the issue of stigmatization. Stigma is a huge barrier for people with mental health issues. It is an obstacle to their recovery, journey and to building resilience. We need to ensure and encourage the promotion and prevention of mental health issues by tackling the stigma head-on. Mental health stigma has been around since time immemorial and we have been talking about how to eradicate mental health stigma for so, so many years now. However, we still live in a society where people still refuse to seek out help for fear of being stigmatized and rejected. Until today, we still see the media using terms such as crazy or madman simply to sensationalize a story. However, in order to tackle stigma around mental health issues in our societies, we must ensure that everyone is on board. Governments, civil society and influencers such as the media. Today we will discuss solutions to promote positive mental health and prevent mental health problems. We want to hear about these solutions. We need to promote and share them. And that's what networks are all about. I insist on stigma, as we all know the devastating impact it may have on people already struggling. So yes, let's start the conversation and let's not be afraid of speaking up about mental health. Just bear in mind that over one million people take their own lives every year. One in four of us may experience some form of mental health problems throughout our lives. And yet, very few will seek help. But how did we let this happen? It is sad to recognize this, particularly since we are living in a world where it is likely that if the average person was to break the leg, they would receive flowers and a get well soon card. However, if they were to struggle and go through a tough time, it would be more likely that they either end up being rejected and stigmatized by the community or be told to cheer up as if it was something easy to do. We live in a world where although one in four of us will have suffered from mental health issues at least once through our lifetime, three in four of us choose to continue to suffer rather than get help in order not to be labeled and stigmatized. And this simply does not add up. And this brings me to my second point. When mental health screams at you, sometimes literally, yes, mental health is sometimes loud, sometimes it is inconvenient, sometimes it is worrying, I'm not going to downplay the seriousness of some problems that people from living a full and happy life are actually stopped from actually doing this. But here we need to recognize that mental health is very much a two-edged sword. On one side, you have the experience and struggle, while on the other side, there's prejudice and discrimination by society. So let's promote positive mental health. Let's encourage people to be understanding and well-informed to combat stigma. And as legislators, we have a duty to remember that people with mental health issues are people first and not their diagnosis. And all those who are affected by mental health issues must be respected and offered appropriate support anywhere they may be in Europe. People living with mental ill health should be seen as persons with a problem whom we can help, support and listen out. 
And this is where I conclude and pass the baton over to you as organizations, individuals and networks who truly care about the mental health well-being of our society. The European Parliament is not an ivory tower. Please reach out to the members of this Parliament in your own member states and let them know what we require to make sure that we positively promote mental health well-being and prevent as much as possible mental health issues. Show them how important it is to build resilient societies where individuals are supported and cared for. At the moment, there are extremely important initiatives on the political agenda, including initiatives on work-life balance, the recent Parliament report on gender equality and mental health, discussions on future EU funding, and the impact these may have on the lives of millions of Europeans. And these are opportunities to tap into, and we need to join forces to make the utmost out of these opportunities. MEP's work transcends from here in Brussels to our own constituencies back home. So the potential that comes from expanding our network can be used to achieve positive results if we truly choose to work together. Thank you for your attention and I wish you a wonderful capacity building seminar.